United with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors, serving throughout the Border Valley community, and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation by KSE Channel 38 Christian Television. And now, United with Christ. Good morning, family. I'm so glad that you've tuned in this morning. And uh, my name is Pastor Steve Brewer. I'm a brand new person for you guys with this program called United in Christ. And it's really kind of curious to me that uh, the thing that God called me to do over 30 years ago was to call the body of Christ to come together to do a work in unity for the glory of God. And so this morning, I want you to know that as this introduction to who I am in your living room this morning <laughs> is uh, I am a career missionary to the country of Mexico. I've been working in, in Guadalupe, Distrito Bravo, Chihuahua, Mexico now for 30 years. My first year I had uh, two orphan children. My second year I was working with uh, 25. My third and following years I had 88 children I was working with. And now today we're building a facility that will house over 200 plus, And it's about 95% completed. So I'm all ex pretty excited about it. Um, I'd like to open this this morning in prayer, but one of the things I would like you to pray about this morning is with me. Um, I am passing kidney stones, and if anyone's had kidney stones, they know it's a pretty, pretty horrific, terrible thing. Uh, very, very painful. So I've taken some medication, so I might be not all that clear, but I'm going to do the best that I can. Uh, I have a couple of people here with me that are brought in from Michigan, and uh, in a little bit would like to introduce them to you as well. But if you have your Bibles, open your Bibles with me this morning to the book of James. And I'd like to read from James 1, 27. Got it? It's in the New Testament. <laughs> James 1, 27 says, Pure religion, undefiled before God the Father, is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask this morning that my family would hear a voice within a voice, that it, they'd hear the voice of the great shepherd speaking through this silly man called Stephen, Mike, and my sister Krista. Lord, we want to bring glory and honor to your kingdom. We want the people that are watching and listening to be encouraged and strengthened, that we all would be more like your son, Christ Jesus. And I thank you and praise you in advance by faith for that, for which only you can do with this program this morning. Use us, Father, to affect hearts and lives for the kingdom of God for eternity's sake. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. True religion, undefiled before God the Father, is this. As a missions organization, we were running about 700, 800 visitors a year helping us build our orphanage in Guadalupe, Mexico. And as all of you know in this area, the violence hit several years ago. Once it hit, the, uh, the church scattered. We went from 700 to almost 1,000 people a year down to 100 people a year. I had many, many churches calling me, uh, saying to me, uh, Stephen, come off the mission field. It's not your responsibility. It's not your country. They're not your children. Uh, it's too dangerous. You're putting yourself in harm's way. And my response to that was, James 1.27, true religion undefiled before God the Father is this. It's not potluck dinners. It's not making disciples. It's not praying. It's not fasting. It's not visiting the prisons. All those things are important. All of them are important. And you could agree with me, I'm sure, that the Holy Spirit could have said anything. He could have said any one of those things as being true religion, but he didn't. He said, this is what's true. If you really want what's true, then we need to be doing these things, to visiting the widows and orphans in their affliction. What happens when we visit the widows and orphans in their affliction? Our heart is moved. We realize that there are some of the most vulnerable people in our society. And I believe with all of my heart that's one of the reasons why God said, this is true. This is love. This is what we should be doing, taking care of widows and orphans. And so today, I'd like to introduce to you Mike and Krista. They've come all the way from Michigan. They're here for a week. They've come for, for several years with their family. And uh, I'd like to start out with uh, Mike. Why do you come? Tell us a little about, about who you are. 
Well, I, I'm, I'm just a, a lay person. I'm, a, I'm an engineer by trade. And uh, uh, the way I got down here was my, my wife joined up with a mission group that was coming down. Missions was a little bit new to our church. I guess this was the first uh, uh, time it had, had, we had done anything like that. And uh, in fact, we grew up in churches that were kind of hands off. We had missionaries that we supported, but never really went anywhere, at least not to international type things. And so it was, uh, it was a little bit new to us. My wife went and she fell in love with it. And uh, I was at the time, actually I had been doing a different thing down in uh, Mississippi doing some stuff. And, and so this was kind of her thing and I had my thing. And, mm -hmm. and it took a little bit of time for her to maybe, I don't know, drag is the right word, but uh, <laughs> convince me to come down and, and try this out. And, uh, but once I got here, you know, and, and I saw um, I heard the stories of how God had moved in miraculous ways. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what really drew me back, because I wanted to be where, where God was actively working. Mm -hmm. And I guess we probably came at the, probably the high point. And then uh, um, since then, we've, we've kind of persevered, I guess, through the, through the sketchy times, maybe a little bit. And, uh, um, but we, we have uh, we've been encouraged by our church to keep coming. Uh, several people from our church, I mean, many, many people, I guess, have come down from our church. Uh, I think we're, we're excited to be a part of something that's so much bigger than just our group. We've met so many great people down here from all over uh, America. I, I'm, I guess we haven't met any international people that have been here, but I know you have had uh -huh. some international people here. Mm -hmm. um, we've, uh, we have friends now from all over America for different groups that have come down that we've met. But probably one of the, the most thrilling things that's happened over the last several years, and I regret that we didn't put more time into it at the beginning, was that we've met and, and have uh, really developed friendships with a lot of the national people that have come over and worked alongside us uh, from Guadalupe and, and other places. And uh, um, so we, you know, and social media has been nice now because we can chat back and forth during the off season and actually communicate a little bit better even via the internet with mm -hmm. translation software and whatnot rather than our feeble attempt at doing Spanish. But uh, um, there's just been so many great things. I mean, I mean God, has, uh, God has moved um, in our family. He's, when we've stepped out on faith a couple times, uh, we've, seen, we've seen how he has responded with that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess it's a, um, uh, you know, we're, we're a family. We have three daughters, uh, teenage mostly teenage daughters. Our youngest is 12. And so they've been coming now for five years, I think. And mm -hmm. uh, I think that's really been important to us too, to instill the um, attitude of, of servanthood and of, of compassion, of uh, developing friendships outside of our norms. I know our kids have, have friendships now amongst mm -hmm. the, some of the Spanish kids and Mexican kids. And uh, Your, your attitude before you came about Mexico, I know that you hear stuff on the news. You have uh, your wife, your beautiful wife, and three daughters. And uh, you've probably heard that there's a lot of violence in Mexico. You probably had family members that said, are you out of your mind? What are you doing? You know, uh, did, did that affect you at all, or was that a concern to you? Or Well, I, when we first started coming, none of that had happened yet, so... I would say personally, I was probably invested before any of that happened. But we did have, we did have some family that had some apprehension about us coming down here. But I guess our our belief system, our, our faith system in God Almighty is, is, uh, um, I guess our mindset was that we're we're better off being in His will, in a place that's dangerous, than being out of in His out of, out of His will in a, in a place that we felt that, that maybe other people might feel was safer. You know, mm -hmm. um, I don't think we've ever. We've never felt threatened. We've never felt intimidated anywhere. Um, uh, the the organization's been really great about being careful to you know there was there was things that we stopped doing for a while or, or whatnot. But the um, no, we've we've never really. Uh, I guess the answer was pretty easy when people would say that because um, we just knew where we were supposed to be. So. Uh, Krista, as a mother, has it ever concerned you at all about bringing your children to, to Mexico? I have never really 
even second thought that um, it would be dangerous for them to be here because I knew, having come before them, I knew where we were. I knew all the people that the ministry had in place and the rules and structure that they had to keep us safe. And, and so it never really even crossed my mind that they would even be in danger because I knew that God had called us here to um, help and, and be a part of this ministry. And so I knew if, if that was his calling that he was going to keep us safe. So. Mm, amen. Amen. One, one of my favorite things to do is uh, allow the body of Christ to experience the things that uh, I get to experience that most of the body of Christ never gets to experience. We are in a denomination, uh, say, you're, what church are you from? The Methodist Church? Free Methodist. Free Methodist. So you're from the Free Methodist Church. And I'm sure you could say this, that you drive through town and you may p pass the Baptist Church or the Assembly of God Church or the Catholic Church, and you're on your way to your church. And you may not visit the other churches very often, mm -hmm. if ever. Um, with me, I've been in all the churches. Mm -hmm. I've spoken the Baptist, the Methodist, Presbyterians, Episcopalians, Charismatic, Assembly of God. I've been with the Catholic Church and, and taught their people. Um, so what I really like to do is I like to uh, mix the groups. Mm -hmm. And uh, the groups that are with me right now, I have a group from New York and a group from Michigan. The Michigan group is Free Methodist, and the New York group are, uh, I think, Pentecostal. And uh, are you guys getting along? I mean, yeah, just... yeah, yeah. Uh, we have met a couple of them before and um, spent time with them down here and actually even um, on our own free time have uh, gone to New York and um, spent some time visiting with them as well. Um, oh, wow. We, yeah, we, we enjoy um, being able to come down here and meet new people and um, minister side by side with them. So even though you, you guys may worship differently or mm -hmm. have some different ideas, you, you guys were still be able, you were still able to come together and, and be family? Yes. yes. Well, I, I think that's the whole, uh, uh, I mean, it's the whole premise of this show, right? And certainly mm -hmm. the whole premise of Tapestries of Life is that, mm -hmm. uh, is that we're all the same under the body of Christ. Amen. And that we may have, uh, um, we may have different methods of how we, we worship, mm -hmm. but, uh, in, in essence, we we are um, we're all worshiping a, a risen Savior that, that has paid for us and, and made the way for us to uh, to come to God. And mm -hmm. so, so those, those those things we hold on together are the things that we ought to focus on, and not the things that we do differently. I guess. Amen. And, Amen. And we've had uh, like last few years, we, we've had opportunities in the fall to do special projects. Mm -hmm. That's been great because uh, we've really enjoyed that. I think yeah. uh, coming down with with people that have been here many times before. Um, you know, we've been here several times now, and, and we were always the new kids on that block. <laughs> uh, people here that were here when, when the wall was being built or when the first floor was being built, and just hearing the stories of all these other people that, uh, I mean, Tapestries represents thousands of people that have been down here, right. like us, that, that mm -hmm. uh, aren't necessarily builders, just, you know. Could, could, you, ex could you explain to our listening audience here, um, Mercy Ministry Day. Is that how that impacts you, what that's all about? Uh, well, let, let me share with the audience okay. here real quick. When these folks come in from around the world, we've had people come from all across America, Canada, Indonesia, Holland, France, Scotland, Peru. Um, they, they come from all over. I, I know I'm probably missing someone, and I apologize, but they come from all over. They come from all over the world to come here. And uh, we pick them up at the airport on Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon or 2 o'clock in the morning with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we, we go to church in Mexico on, on Sunday. I want the, the American people, the white people, to, uh, uh, to aprender el sabor de México. That's my, that's my heart, that they would learn uh, the flavor of Mexico, mm -hmm. to fall in love with the Mexican people. They really are easy people to love. Mm -hmm. And so Monday and Tuesday, we'll do construction work. And then Wednesday, we do what's called a Mercy Ministry Day, where we will go out as a ministry and buy about, about $4,000 in fresh food 
from S-Mart in Mexico. Uh, the food that the people of Mexico are familiar with. And then uh, these, these folks here, the groups come, and then they, they uh, actually minister and hand out the food to the people. We buy enough food to last uh, a family of five uh, for approximately about a week. And we will feed 350 families on that one day. Um, we'll have, I'm not kidding, we'll have cases of food probably, well, let's see on your TV there, about this high. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll put a, an American on one side and a, and a Mexican family on the other side because we don't want to be the Americans coming in doing it for them. We're partnering with them mm -hmm. in this great endeavor. And, uh, and then after Mercy Ministry is over, Thursday and Friday, we go back doing the work of building the orphanage, trying to bring the children home as, as quickly as possible. Uh, could you share with me, Krista, your, your feelings about Mercy Ministry Day? Uh, it is an eye-opening experience, um, first time around, especially just to uh, see the need in the eyes of the um, people there that are, that are standing for hours waiting after hearing... Um, the pastor speak and, and uh, getting a chance to uh, just give their lives to Christ as well mm -hmm. and then uh, then seeing them in line and uh, and then being able to hand that to them and and look in their eyes and and the children especially are um, are a big eye-opening for my own kids as well because they see they get to see then that that there are children their ages that are uh, struggling and don't have it as well as they do and and um, that's something that we bring up regularly at our at our house so I'm, I'm mindful of a, a child that I've noticed over the years that has really kind of latched on to you guys uh, his name is uh, Cesar, mm -hmm. and Cesar was, I think, five years old when I got him. He was um, a child that was thrown away. He was part of the drug cartel, the, one of the major uh, players in our town in the drug cartel. That was his son, and we had determined that we were going to love this child in Christ and give this child a hand up instead mm -hmm. of a hand out. Uh, do you, you remember Cesar? I do, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me how he impacted your life? Or? Well, he was this, you know, this, this kid that just kind of came out of nowhere from the, from the side and just kind of latched onto us. And, mm -hmm. and I remember we, we played with him that day and shared bananas and just, uh, um, and so then we would, we would look for him all the time and, and, and yeah. see him and he would remember us. And, and uh, um, we, we pray for him at home, you know, because we knew that, uh, that down here his his life was um, uh, that he was in danger really mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. he had, he had no support system and uh, um, so it, and we would come back and we would look for him and we would see him occasionally you know uh, not not every time we came back but it was it was good to see him to see as he's grown uh, a little bit uh, that he's been uh, taken in by the church a little bit and at least. Uh, at least given the opportunity to uh, um, uh, to really grow in Christ. And, and Amen. Mm -hmm. See, for me, Tapestries Life Ministries is so much more than um, providing a home for homeless kids and orphan children, or meeting their needs. But, you know, I you know, and I know that, and our our audience also knows that the children can't wait till the orphanage is done. They're hungry today. That's why we do what we do with Mercy Ministry. Mm -hmm. But it's not enough that we just meet their physical needs, uh, provide shelter and doctors and dentists and food and education, teach them a marketable skill. If that's all that we do as Tapestry's Life, then, then we have failed. We have absolutely failed. Mm -hmm. God has called us to introduce His children back to the Father. And so for more important for me is this work. And I believe, and I think I've shared this with you in the past, that I believe with all of my heart that out of this facility, off of this property, will come future generations of apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come together in unity for the glory of God. I've, sh I've shared this many, many times that uh, the people in Michigan are not reaching the Hispanics in their, in their 
state or in their community. The people of New York, the people of, of uh, Minnesota, they have huge populations of, of Hispanics in their community, but they're not reaching them for Christ. They can't speak the language. They don't like the food. They don't have a clue about the culture. But yet these kids from Mexico do. And I honestly believe that uh, the day is going to come when these children are going to go to your state and your cities to reach the kids and reach the families, the Hispanics in your mm -hmm. community that you're not reaching. Right. And so for, for us as a ministry, that's number one. That's our, that's our number one priority, seeing children's lives change for eternity's sake. Uh, your daughters, have they ever felt frightened or? Uh, no, they they love being down here. They have uh, made many friends and uh, look forward to every time they they can come down. There have been a couple of times that we've come without them, just the two of us, and they are they're jealous that they don't get to come. <laughs> um, but uh, their heart is here as well, and uh, they just they love it here and they love the people. So see that that's that's my heart is when when you guys come and groups like you come from around the world, I don't want the, the people to focus on the, the poverty of Mexico. I want them to take home the people of Mexico. Mm -hmm. Take them home in your heart. Uh, my, my heart's desire also with this ministry is to break down prejudice where people have all these stereotypes about the Mexican people and what are they doing in our country and why are they here and what's it all about, blah, blah, blah. Well, when, once you come and see and observe, um, it's... It changes you. I, I believe it changes you. For is that is that? Am I saying something right? Or yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so. And and I, I remember the first time my daughter came up to me and said, "I want to go spend the night with my friend in Guadalupe." <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I can't say that I didn't have a little bit of a spirit of fear, but uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, I I knew it was the right thing to do. I, I think I looked to you and 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 you kind of gave me the nod. Yes, you'll be okay. And uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, we stepped out on little faith and, and, and everything. I, I think those, those things have done a lot to instill in our children uh, to break down some of those barriers maybe from, I mean, we live, in a, we live in a pretty Caucasian part of the world up in northern Michigan. <laughs> and, uh, um, and we still have those opportunities as much uh, to, to interact with, with people of all races. And, and, uh, oh, very good, amen. We're just about ready to wrap up this program here in the next couple of minutes, but... I want you to hear my heart. The Church of Mexico, they are, they are our family. Mm -hmm. They just happen to live in a different place. They have different color skin, different color hair, different color eyes, but they're still our family. They're the family of Christ. And much of the Church of Mexico feels as if the Church of America has abandoned them. Um, they've gone through this horrific time in their life, and instead of the Church of America rallying to them, they have fled away from the violence. My response to, to the churches that have left and have asked me to leave as well, I keep coming back to them saying the exact same thing. Do we need to apologize to the apostles? Every one of those men gave up their lives for the, for the message. The message is that important. Now, I don't want to die. I don't want to be a martyr. But the message is that important. And the violence in Mexico does not affect me whatsoever. Uh, it does not give me the spirit of fear. God does not give us the spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. You cannot threaten me with heaven, for to live is Christ, to die is gain. And these are not just words that we say, but they're words that we live as missionaries to foreign countries. And with that, I'd like to just share this book with you, uh, Treasures from the Cross. Yeah, here it is by uh, David. It's for a donation of $25 to this, this uh, station here. You can own this book, Treasures from the Cross. Or you can call 532-8518. Or you can even visit on the website, ksctv.com. And for $25, they will send you this book, Treasures of the Cross. I, uh, I have not read it yet, but I'm looking forward to reading it. And I believe that it... Uh, would be a good thing for your library. It's, it's funny to me because the cross is important to me as also. If you had the opportunity to come out and visit with us in Guadalupe, you'd see that the building that we're building is bigger than a football field in the size of a cross, in, in the shape of a cross. The cross is important. 
And I, I would ask that uh, if you have $25, that you do the best that you can to get this book. Uh, in, in closing up here, I'd just like to uh, say thank you guys for, mm -hmm. for coming, for taking a, a vacation with a purpose. Rather, you could have went, you could have taken your money and went to Cancun or Puerto Vallarta or Mazatlan or, or Veracruz or anywhere. You could have went anywhere. But you chose to take a vacation with a purpose and give children a hand up instead of a, uh, instead of a handout. You came to the beaches of, of Guadalupe, Mexico. <laughs> we, just, we got a lot of beach, we just don't have any water. <laughs> So God bless you guys, and thank you, thank you for coming. And I am so glad that uh, you have fallen in love with the church from, from New York, even to the place of even going to visit them on vacation. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's my heart, that we work together in unity for the glory of God. It's time, family, that our walls come down. The first thing I tell every group that comes to me is, I don't care what the name of your church is. If you have Christ in your heart, and you're doing all that you can to live for Christ, then I can extend my hand of fellowship to you. You are my brother. You are my sister in Christ. So God bless you guys. Thank you for allowing me to come into your living room this morning. And um, I hope that you're blessed. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would meet the needs of every listener that's watching this program today, that you would meet their needs according to your riches and glory found in Christ Jesus. You are the God who is more than enough. And I thank you and praise you, God, in advance by faith for that for which you, only you can do spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially in the lives of your, your viewers today and in ours as well. And most of all, for the children of Mexico. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. Please pray for the kids of Mexico. We need you. Thank you for watching United with Christ. We pray this has been a blessing to you, and we invite you to tune in again tomorrow. We invite your comments, questions, or prayer requests. You may contact us at KSE Christian Television, 2201 East Wyoming Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79903, or call us at 915-532-8588 during regular business hours, or you can visct our website at www.kscetv.com. God bless you.